So what I wanted to talk about today is how I keep track of my performance in a sustainable way for myself, the way it's kind of less friction and most value. So at work or in your studies, over time it's very easy to forget what you've been working on. And maybe you can remember the projects that you worked on and who you worked on and what was the outcome, but there are a lot of very critical details and reflections around projects that are really important to remember when it comes to talking about what you've done during your interviews, writing it on the CV, or talking with your manager during your performance evaluation to show them that uh, you brought the value to the company and what were the challenges that you overcome, or even when you create your own personal development uh, plan for the future at work. Remembering very specific details about projects really helps you to see what kind of skills it's good for you to develop and what kind of projects you might want to work on in the future. So I also had this problem myself when I started working at King four years ago. Um, after some time I started to realize that it's really hard to remember what I've done a month or a few months ago. So I tried to come up with a structure where I write down specific, very important in my opinion and for my own purpose, details about projects that I work on. And I derived this structure from the way you usually are expected to answer questions in the interview. So when you get a question at the interview, when you're asked like, tell me about the recent project you worked on, what you're expected is to talk through a specific structure. There are various frameworks that I use for keeping track of the structure. So there is one that's called STAR that stands for situation, task, action, and result. There is the one that's a bit more extended and I like it a bit more. It's called SUARE or something like that. SUARA. SUARA. So there is one that's called SUARA and it stands for, again, situation, objective, action, results, and aftermath. The part that I think is really important is the aftermath, and I don't really like the name aftermath for it. I prefer learning and next steps, because this really describes in the best way how do you approach the project, what kind of skills you develop, maybe it was technical, maybe it was soft skills, maybe it was something that's applicable to your industry, and what could have been done differently. Being able to reflect on your own performance in various situations and projects you work on is a super important skill, and that's the one that most of the interviewers or your managers would want to see in you at your work. So I came up with a way of tracking my performance in a similar way that kind of answers all these questions, but add a little bit more detail that you can use for your own personal development. My criteria were that it has to be very flexible, so I should be able to include different sections or remove different sections whenever I need to. It should be very little friction, so it should be some tool that can be available anywhere um, in any way, very easily online, of course. And the most important part is that I shouldn't feel obliged or restricted. It shouldn't be too complex. It shouldn't feel like a separate project of me keeping track of my performance on other projects. So for my own sake, I chose Google Sheets for that because I think they're the most kind of flexible and easy to use and available anywhere. Of course, it doesn't mean that you would have to use Google Sheets. You can just copy the structure that I will share with you and use it wherever it's most convenient for you. So I have a document here, copy. It's a copy of the actual document that I have about my performance and development part and I have various parts here that you can see. So just a little disclaimer, I have to say that I don't always fill all the columns. I don't want to put myself under pressure of having to come up with something if I don't feel like it. They're here mostly for my reminder that, oh, this is something I can think about and if I have an idea or if I have something I want to share with myself in the future, I would write it here. Now let's dive into the actual project that I worked on that I'm gonna describe here um, step by step. For the time frame, I worked on this project from February to April 2020. Approximately, there were some days later and before that I also contributed, but that doesn't really make a difference here. The name of the project is like KPI Overview Dashboard. KPI stands for Key Performance Indicators. Some companies use that as a an indicator of whether they're performing well. Great explanation. You get it. What did I do for this project? Here I would write all the various tasks and contributions I've done. This is not an exhaustive list. I was a bit lazy to write it, but I wrote that I defined the KPIs, dimensions for the breakdown, 
for the other view, I built the data sets, I built dashboard itself, and I shared it with stakeholders. What are the challenges um, here in this project? It was really important to mention challenges because they're quite strong and significant and I really had to work through them. The skills that I use is not a very important column. In general, I use similar skills and similar projects, but for this specific case, I just decided to write it down. So for the outcome, this part is very important because it's like a, the tangible outcome that is available there for people in your company to see the product that you built pretty much. So yeah, there are, for example, data sets that are available for stakeholders. Um, there is a centralized dashboard that is built and presented to the company. And there is an essential groundwork that's done with uh, data tracking. And the, one of the values for our team is that now our stakeholders have a place to go to ask questions or to see answers for the questions about various metrics um, of the product performance. And they don't have to ask us directly, which saves us a lot of time. Then the value to the company is a bit more bigger scope. And here I wanted to say that, well, the overview of the performance of the product really affected how some of the managers make decisions about what their teams will work on. If I would uh, use this example for myself, I would write it a bit more detailed. I would write specific projects or specific decisions that were made based on the dashboard that I built. Next steps here would be including a more detailed KPI breakdown. Again, if it would be for me, I would write a bit more detail what would be the difference. And the what I could have done better part here would be working more proactively with stakeholders and solving dependencies faster. But I think it's really good to do it at least once in a quarter, so like four times a year while you still remember what you worked on this quarter. And it might align with some kind of quarterly review processes in your company. Now coming to a more interesting part where we're going to try to leverage this information and see how it can be used to update your CV, to work on your performance evaluation and to come up with your personal development plan at work. So with, for the part with the CV, it's really important to write it short and snappy and as understandable as possible for a person who is going to skim through your CV, maybe putting some keywords that might be interesting for them, relevant for the role that you would apply to. It's also a good idea to add like tangible deliverables, either as a metric that you help to achieve or as a impact on certain stakeholders or people in the company or outside the company. So for the CV part, I might write something like this, uh, where I say that I define metrics and KPIs, measuring certain product performance, build the data models and dashboards on top of those metrics and KPIs and uh, allowed or presented their results to the relevant stakeholders, which allowed them to make certain decisions. I might want to include here what kind of decisions were made, but it depends on how my company would treat this information released publicly. And for that, I would use mostly responsibilities and value to the company and value to the team. So I might actually want to add here that this allowed for X percent reduction in time spent in product analytics team on answering stakeholder questions. When it comes to performance evaluation, talk with your manager. It really depends on the company you work in and your manager. You probably have certain KPIs or metrics attached to your performance. And if you have to meet those, then of course, you know better than me what you need to do and how you need to phrase this. But a general overview and the questionnaire that you get for your performance evaluation is listing the projects and the value that they brought to the company. So in this case, I would mention my responsibilities. I would take parts from the responsibilities part where I would write what I've done and mention value both to the internal team and value to the company as a part of this. I might also want to mention which kind of stakeholders I worked with and how I managed to build better connection with them through this project. What's important in the performance evaluation talk is also to mention how you went beyond the expectations for your role because that's the basis for your salary upgrade or for your uh, promotion. For example, I can mention that I used project management skills that are not necessarily expected for me to be used and write how I kind of applied them in this project and how we helped to make the project smoother and faster. And then coming to a personal development talk. So this is the part where you would sit down first yourself, I guess, and decide where you want to grow, what do you enjoy the most, what kind of skills you want to learn, what kind of skills you want to improve, maybe what's not really interesting for you so you don't really want to spend time on it. 
and so on. For the performance development talk, the part that I think identifies the best um, is what I could have done better in this project. So I know maybe that wouldn't be actually something that I would want to develop, but um, in this case, I would want to develop stakeholder management in a better way or improve my product management skills and stakeholder management skills. Um, this is very fluffy and of course I wouldn't keep it like this. I would write maybe different actions that I can do to achieve that, what I can foresee, what kind of projects I can foresee that I can work on to get there. And I will discuss it with my manager and see if he or she has suggestions on how we can improve this. Now, this doesn't seem like a big deal. It's just a spreadsheet with things that you write about your projects you worked on, but it really helped me over time. Like I've been working for four years full time on many different things and with many different people in different areas and in very different companies. And now looking back at this, I can really see the value because I can't really remember everything I've done at King before I joined Tink. I can't really remember all the skills I used or all the challenges I faced that can be really useful for me if I want to apply somewhere else and talk through these things. I'm going to share the template for the spreadsheet, but of course you don't have to use the exact template. Maybe it's just Take it as an inspiration for your own keeping track of your performance and personal development. It doesn't have to be also specifically applied to your work. It can be applied to your personal project. There are still challenges you face. There are still skills you use. There are still um, things that you can have done better or value you brought to yourself or to others. So maybe think about this as an inspiration to how you can tailor it for yourself, customize it, uh, use it maybe in a better way. And if you do, please let me know. I would be really curious to find out how you adapted this for yourself, whether you think some things are not very useful or you found some parts that I didn't mention that you think are really important to keep track of. Uh, let me know in the comments here. And if you know someone who might benefit from this framework, who didn't use it before, Maybe it's a friend or a colleague. I would be happy if you share this video with them and they can also use the template that I will attach down below. So good luck in your personal and professional life and have a nice day.